Okay, in this video we're going to explore a series solution to this following second order linear differential equation. So we have 1 plus 2x squared y double prime plus 6xy prime plus 2y. So we can um, apply a theorem that we had in a previous video to determine what the ordinary points are and to determine what the interval of convergence will look like for such a power series solution. And so maybe first of all notice that x equals 0 is ordinary. So that means we can take our um, power series solution about x equals zero using the technique of uh, series solutions at ordinary points and also we'll look at the fact that uh, 1 plus 2 x squared equals zero um, would imply that x equals plus minus i over root 2. So that actually means that every point is an ordinary point but um, furthermore, if we think about the distance between x and i over root 2 in the complex plane, so let's point that out. So let's say this is the complex plane. We have the real axis here, and we have the imaginary axis here, i, r. And so we're looking at expanding about this. And our power series solution will have a radius of convergence governed by the distance from here to these zeros and so one of them will be right here and one of them will be right here and this distance is 1 over root 2. Great, so what you can think about is this thing swinging around in a circle and that will give you your interval of convergence. So in other words we're guaranteed to have convergence on the interval minus 1 over root 2 to 1 over root 2. Good. So now that we have that taken care of, let's go ahead and uh, look at what we need to find a solution to this. So we'll start off by setting y equal to the sum n equals 0 to infinity of a sub n x to the n. And now we need to calculate the derivative of y and the second derivative of y. So notice we get y prime equals the sum n equals 0 to infinity of n times a sub n x to the n minus 1. And so now notice here that... <clears throat> I don't, I don't really need to leave this n equals 0 in here. Um, so I can start this off at n equals 1 instead because notice uh, multiplying times 0 wouldn't really give you any new information. Good. And then next we have y double prime equals the sum. In this case we can start in n equals 2 to infinity of n times n minus 1 times a sub n x to the n minus 2. Okay, so this is our standard setup for finding power series solutions based at 0. Now what we're going to do is plug this into the differential equation. So I'll just write plugged in to the left hand side of the differential equation. So I'll just write that as DE. So notice that's going to give us the following 1 plus 2x squared times this sum n equals 2 to infinity of n times n minus 1 a sub n x to the n minus 2. So we have that. And now we're going to have plus 6 times x, the first derivative. So that'll be the sum n equals 1 to infinity of n a sub n x to the n minus 1. Great. And then all of this will be plus 2 times the 0th derivative, in other words, the function itself. Um, and that will be just the sum from 0 to infinity of a n x, sub x to the n. Okay, good. So now what I want to do is distribute both of these, well, all three of these really. Um, and gain a new series equation. So let's see what we get when we do that. So over here we're going to get the sum n equals 2 to infinity of n times n minus 2 times n minus 1 times a sub n x to the n minus 2. That's what we get from multiplying 1 through plus the sum of 2n 
n minus 1, a sub n, x to the n. Okay, good. And now, in order to uh, put these in the right uh, form starting at the right point, I want to start this from n equals 0 to infinity. So notice that doesn't actually add any terms on because if we plug 0 in here, we get 0. If we plug 1 in here, we also get 0. So it's like I've added 0 twice. Okay, great. And now I'm going to do something similar on the next term. So I'm going to add this through n equals 0 to infinity of 6n a sub n, and now we have x to the nth power. Okay, so we have something like that. So again, I like added 0 in. And then finally, I have this is plus the sum n equals 0 to infinity of 6 a sub n x to the n, and I have all of that equals 0. Okay, so now we're in a good spot. Notice that all of these are already indexed in a way that we can combine them. And then this one can be indexed in a way that we can combine it by um, replacing n with n plus 2. So let's do that. So replacing n with n plus 2 here, that's going to give us the sum n equals 0 to infinity of, so now we'll have n plus 2 times n plus 1 a sub n plus 2 x to the n. Okay, great. So we've got something like that. And now we can combine all of these together. So now notice we have the sum n equals 0 to infinity. And now let's look at the like terms in all of these sums, or maybe the greatest common factor in all the terms from this sum. Notice that we have an a sub n x to the n in all of these parts, so we can factor that out, and that's going to leave us with 2n times n minus 1 plus 6n um, plus 6, um, and that's all multiplied by a sub n x to the n, and we know that's equal 0 because we want this to be a solution to our differential equation. Now, before I clean up the board and move on to the next step, I want to notice the following. So notice if we multiply this out, we get 2n squared, and then we get minus 2n plus 6n, so that's going to be plus 4n, and then we get um, plus... Oh, I see. I made a mistake real quick. Notice here, this 2 I brought down as a 6. So let's fix that real quick. So we have a 2 here, and that's going to leave us with a 2 here. Okay, great. Which makes this equal to uh, 2n squared plus 4n plus 2. But uh, if you notice, that thing factors like 2 and then n plus 1 squared. And so we'll use that when we rewrite this. Okay, so I'll clean up the board, and then we'll start at this step. Okay, so we left off at this step. So we have the sum n plus 2 times n plus 1, a sub n plus 2, x to the n, and then the sum 2, n plus 1 squared, a sub n, x to the n equals 0. But now everything is set so that we can combine these sums together, and that's going to give us the sum n equals 0 to infinity, n plus 2, times n plus 1, a sub n plus 2, um, plus 2, n plus 1 squared, a sub n, x to the n, where we use the fact that uh, the... No, sorry. Where we use the fact that these were indexed in a way so that uh, x, sub x to the n was a common factor. Okay, good. Now we're going to use the trick that the right-hand side can be written as a power series where every term is equal to zero. So that gives us the following equation. So that tells us that for 
n bigger than or equal to zero, we have this equation. n plus two times n plus one, a sub n plus two, plus two n plus one squared, a sub n equals zero. So we can pretty easily solve that for a sub n plus two, and we'll get the following. So we'll get a sub n plus two equals, so let's see what we have. We have negative two, um, and then next we're going to have n plus one over n plus two. So notice one of the factors of um, n plus one cancels, and then we'll have this multiplied by a sub n. So that's going to give us information about a sub 2, a sub 3, a sub 4, a sub 5, so on and so forth. So a sub 0 and a sub 1, these are free. Okay, great. So I'll clean up the board and then we'll start from this spot. Okay, good. So again, we had a sub 0 is free, a sub 1 is free, and then we had this two-step recursion. a sub n plus 2 depends only on a sub n, which uh, tells us that this is going to break down into even terms and odd terms. So let's see how that works. So for even terms, we're going to get the following. So the first one will be a sub 0 obviously, and then the second one is going to be a sub 2, which we can write in terms of a sub 0. So we can write that as minus 2 times, so that'll be 1 over 2 a sub 0. In other words, it's minus a sub 0. Okay, good. And then next, we have a sub 4, so that's going to be minus 2 times 3 over 4 a sub uh, 2, so that will be um, 3 over 2 a sub 0 after you cancel everything. Okay, good. And then a sub 6, so that's going to be minus 2 times um, 5 over 6 a sub 4. But uh, we know that that will be equal to, so let's see, we have minus 5 times 3 over 3 times 2 a sub 0. Okay? So um, everything is shaping up. So notice uh, every other term is negative and every other term is positive. And then furthermore, it looks like in the numerator, we're going to have a descending power of odd numbers. And in the denominator, we seem to have something like a factorial. So let's see if we can put this together. So we have a sub 2n equals... So let's look at this. This is 2 times 3 and we get a minus. This is 2 times 2 and we get a plus. This is 2 times 1 and we get a minus. This is 2 times 0 and we get a plus. So it looks like we have minus 1 to the n. Okay, that's good. And then the next thing that we have that's easy to see is that here we have 2 times 3 and we have 3 factorial on the bottom. Here we have 2 times 2 and 2 factorial on the bottom. So it looks like we have n factorial on the bottom. Great. And then notice here we have 6. 6 minus 1 is 5. And then we have um, a product of odd numbers. 4. 4 minus 1 is 3. And then we have a product of odd numbers. So that means it looks like we have a descending product of odd numbers starting at 2n minus 1. So I'm going to introduce some notation right here. If you want to skip every other number, so in other words, do 2n minus 1 times 2n minus 3, skipping 2. The notation for that is to put two exclamation points. It's like a double factorial. So what that means is that, for example, 5 double factorial would be 5 times 3 times 1, and so on and so forth. So that gives us some nice uh, notation for writing a sub 2n, and we have this is all multiplied by a sub 0. Okay, good. So now let's look at the odd terms uh, to finish it off. So our odd terms 
are as follows. So A1 will be free, so we'll just write A1. And then A3 can be written as follows. So that's going to be minus 2. And then we'll have over 3. And then in the numerator, we'll have 2. Um, and then this will be A1. So in other words, that's going to be minus 4 time minus 4 over 3 a1 okay good now let's notice that uh, a5 so let's give myself a little more room so a5 will be minus 2 and let's see in the numerator we have a 4 um, and then in the denominator we have let's see we have 5 and then a3 Good. So notice those minus signs are going to cancel, and then we're going to be left with the following. So that's going to give us uh, 4 squared times 2 over 5 times 3a1. Okay, so um, I'll let you guys work out the next couple of terms, but what we see happening here is that we have powers of 4 in each, and then we have this descending product of odd numbers in the denominator. So using tricks that we used on this even case, we can see that this gives us the following formula. a sub 2n plus 1 will be given by the following. So it's minus 1 to the n, minus 1 to the n, and then it'll be 4 to the n times n factorial over... 2n plus 1, and then we'll use this double factorial notation one more time, and then that's multiplied by a1. Okay, great. So those are our coefficients. Now I'll erase the board, and then we'll write down the final solution. Okay, so let's summarize what we just did into a final solution. So we have this final solution, y equals a naught. We have to pull out the first term because it doesn't really satisfy this closed formula that we found. So it's 1 plus the sum n equals 1 to infinity of the following. So minus 1 to the n, 2n minus 1 double factorial over n factorial. Then we have x to the n. Then we have some, something similar for the odd terms. Um, so, uh, and I noticed here I should have, this is 2n, and then this will be 2n plus 1. Good. And then we have, we have to pull out the first term again. And then we have um, n equals 1 to infinity, minus 1 to the n, and then 4 to the n, n factorial over 2n plus 1 double factorial, and then x to the 2n plus 1. Okay, good. So we have the even terms and the odd terms. And just as a reminder, in order to write this down carefully, we define m double factorial as follows. So it's the following product where you skip every other term. So it's m times m minus 2 times m minus 4 all the way down. And then if m is even, you end at 4 times 2. And then if m is odd, you're going to end at 5 times 3 times 1. So this is just a nice uh, short way of writing this kind of falling factorial that you see in these series solutions to differential equations.